Welcome back to FTD Facts. I'm Sarah Carvalho and today I'm pretty stoked to dive into 10 interesting facts about Rastafarianism. So let's get right into it. All right, starting off with fact number 10, let's talk a little bit about the founding of Rastafarianism. Rastafarianism was founded in Jamaica as an African-centric philosophy and religion in the 1930s. It was popularized by the reggae singer Bob Marley during the 1970s, who made people aware of Rastafarianism across the world. Since then, it has been predominantly practiced in Jamaica and Ethiopia. Currently, there are over 24,000 out of 2.7 million people who identify as Rastafari living in Jamaica and approximately 1 million worldwide adherents of Rastafarianism as a faith. Rastafarians believe that black people are the chosen people of God, but that through colonization and the slave trade, their role has been suppressed. All right, next, let's talk a little bit about Rastafarianism and Christianity. Is there a connection? Well, I was surprised to learn that Rastafarianism follows the Abrahamic tradition of monotheism, referring to the singular deity as Jah. Rastafarians hold the Christian Bible as their primary scripture, but offer an interpretation highly connected to their own political and geographical realities. Centered around early 20th century Jamaica, Rastafarianism emerged as an ethno-cultural reaction to British occupation and oppression. This oppression would play a major role in the Afrocentric interpretation of the Bible favored by Rastafarians. There are no churches or official meeting places either. They usually gather once a week in each other's homes or at a local community center. Even though they follow a lot of passages in the Christian Bible, Rastafarians celebrate Christmas on January 7th, since this is the Ethiopian Christmas. Furthermore, there is no official Rastafarian marriage ceremonies. If a marriage does take place, it is usually regarded as a social occasion rather than a religious event. Unrelated men and women who live together are called husband and wife, even if they're not legally married. Likewise, there is no formal funeral ceremony for Rastafarians as they believe reincarnation follows death and that life is eternal. All right, let's look at the beliefs surrounding heaven and hell. Because many of the descendants of Jamaica's population were slaves who were taken from their homes in Africa, Rastafarians believe that Jamaica is hell or Babylon. Conversely, Ethiopia is the homeland, Zion or heaven. Many Rastafarians aspire to make a pilgrimage to Ethiopia. Let's learn a little bit about the prophet of Rastafarianism. Rastafarianism has its roots in the prophecies of a man named Marcus Garvey, who is considered a prophet. In the 1920s, Garvey started the black nationalist movement in the United States. He wanted all of the descendants of former slaves to make their way back to Africa. He also said that one day a black man would be crowned as king in Africa and that this man would become the new Messiah. And of course, this leads us into talking about the Messiah. So, in the early 1930s, a movement of Rastafarians adopted the belief that the faithful were living in an African diaspora scattered from their homelands by colonization and slavery. To be freed from oppression in Western society, or Babylon, many Rastafarians believe it necessary to resettle adherents in the African homelands. A figure of central importance in the Rastafarian faith, Hale Selassie, rose to the rank of Emperor of Ethiopia in 1930. This was considered the germinal moment in the emergence of the modern religious tradition. Selassie was viewed by Rastafarians as the second coming, a direct descendant of Christ and the Messiah foretold in the book of Revelation. And coming up at fact number five, the halfway point in our video, we're gonna look at the spread of Rastafarianism. Selassie was seen as the man who would lead the people of Africa and those living in the diaspora to freedom and liberation. His 1966 visit to Jamaica would become the pivotal moment in the spread of Rastafarian ideas and the resultant political movement for liberation within Jamaica. 
Jamaica. This visit led to the eventual conversion of Rastafarianism's most famous adherent, singer Bob Marley. Marley would help to spread the popular visibility of the faith, as well as its practices of communal gathering, musical expression, preservation of the natural world, and the use of the popular green herb as a spiritual sacrament. Today, between 700,000 and 1 million adherents practice Rastafarianism, the majority of them concentrated in Jamaica. All right, and let's look at their specific colors or true colors. The Rastafarian colors are red, green, gold, and black. The colors respectively symbolize the blood of the black community killed in Jamaica during the slave era, the country's lush vegetation, the wealth of Ethiopia, and the Africans themselves who began the Rastafarian religion. All right, and I think it goes without saying that there is a preference for clean living. Rastafarians avoid meat, do not eat pork, and consume a lot of fruits and vegetables. They are not supposed to drink coffee, cow's milk, or alcohol. They are also supposed to refuse to eat processed food. Now, while they cannot drink alcohol, they are able to smoke natural substances. Rastafarians use the green herb as part of their religion. During reasoning sessions, they're called, they smoke together and discuss issues in the community. Every meeting also has a huge communal feast afterward. And what about ink and labels? Are those allowed? Well, Rastafarians believe in what is pure and natural and do not usually tamper with their bodies. This means that the body should be free of tattoos and piercings. Also, practitioners never label themselves as Rastafarians and instead call each other Rastafari or Rasta. Rastafarians also prefer to call their beliefs a philosophical movement rather than a religion. And coming in at number one, our fact about long hair. Rastafarians took a verse from Leviticus chapter 21 1 verse 5 that says they shall not make baldness upon their head while well, they interpreted that as meaning don't cut your hair locking the hair is a popular way for Rastafarians to continue to grow their hair while still maintaining cleanliness and neatness as a Rastafarian grows older you can actually see the transformation of where their locks stop growing in black and begin to go gray the locks become like a wonderful timeline of their life. You may notice that some Rastafarians also wear beanies called a Rasta cap or a tam to hold their locks out of the way on top of their head whenever it's necessary. All right, friends, this brings us to the end of our video on 10 interesting facts about Rastafarianism. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. It's always so interesting and eye-opening when we can respectfully learn about and appreciate the different religions and beliefs systems of our world. On your way out, don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell to stay updated on all future posts. And we'll see you right here next time for more facts. Bye.